Uh, let me share a few words about our next uh, guest of honor, Dr. Deshmukh sir. Uh, Dr. S. G. Deshmukh uh, is currently the director of ABV Indian Institute of Information Technology and Management, Gwalior, and a professor at IIT Delhi. He earned his B.Tech, M.Tech, and Ph.D. from IIT Bombay. He has more than 20 se 27 years of teaching and research experience. He has been actively involved in modeling and simulation of manufacturing and service systems from quality point of view. He is on the editorial board of international journals such as International Journal of Systems and Engineering. He has authored several books including one on supply chain management. He has been a consultant to many leading organizations. Dr. S.G. Deshmukh is recipient of Lillian Gilbreth Award of IIIE, Eminent Engineer Award of Institution of Engineers, Ramaswamy Cup of IIIE and several Best Paper Awards besides Best Book Award of ISTE 2011-12 and Lifetime Achievement Award of System Society of India. Dr. S.G. Deshmukh is associated with Gwalior chapter of QCFI and has facilitated hosting of local QCFI conventions at Gwalior. May I now request Dr. S.G. Deshmukh to enlighten us with a few words. Professor Sonde, Professor Prabhu, Professor Sadgopan, Mrs. Sadgopan, distinguished guest on the dais, my old friend, Professor Dinesha, I am able to see. Professor Dinesh Shah, sir, I am seeing after 25 years. So give a big hand to him. I missed all opportunities to see him. <laughs> Esteemed faculty of IIITB and my dear student. First of all, a very, very happy birthday to all of you. And it is a great day, 17th birthday. And 17th birthday is to be remembered and to remember this, we also have this Ingenious Day to mark the birthday of Bharat Ratna, Mr. Vishweshwaraya. Sir, Vishweshwaraya also had the privilege of designing a dam in Gwalior. So, I now represent Gwalior. Gwalior is a music city of Tansen. Gwalior is also having a huge cultural and musical heritage. So if not Tansen, sir, my stay I have utilized in making myself as a Kansen, listening to various music concerts. We also host lot of events by Speak Make. Another connection that IIIT Bangalore and our institute Triple ITM Gwalior, we started almost same time. Ours is also a typically postgraduate institute, but we have M attached with us, M for management and M for so many other things. So besides IT, we also do many things. And as they say that there are different levels, you call it as pride, arrogance or self-esteem, depending on the view which you take. And just to list this, it starts with I, IT, IIT and triple IT. And unfortunately or fortunately, I am associated with all of this. I spent lot many years in IIT, Dinesha was my senior, I spent 11 years in hostel, I did my B.Tech, M.Tech and Ph.D. Mine was the last batch of having 5 years B.Tech. I also did Ph.D. from IIT Bombay. And normally, you are a fortunate community. Normally, PhD and postgraduate students are generally considered as outcast in IIT system because premier product, as they say, 
is B-Tech. And in the later stages, M-Tech or PhD, and then faculty. So all these degraded stages I have passed through, sir. Not only passed, but then I also had an opportunity of migrating myself from IIT to IIITM. And in between, I also had a small stint at a Reserve Bank of India Institute called as Indira Gandhi Institute of Development and Research. It was set up by our earlier Prime Minister and this was the vision of Prime Minister at that time that this should be a model economic research institute in the entire South Asian region. So there I rubbed shoulders with economists and people coming from environmental science, environmental engineering and some of the people who are coming from what we call it as humanities. And that basically gave me an altogether a different perspective. Now what I am going to share is two, three interesting points. First is you are all IT student. You are all born and brought up on IT. Today they say that if mobile is spoiled, then you blame the child. And if the child is spoiled, you blame the mobile. So you belong to that generation. You belong to Facebook generation. You belong to WhatsApp generation. And this is very interesting. All of a sudden, our generation has seen all the changes. Maybe Professor Sadgopan will pardon. We belong to maybe half G or one G. And you all sitting here, after second or third row, you belong to 4G. Fortunately, this technology, thanks to social media, it also helps to bridge what we call it as digital divide. There is a divide between different segments of society, maybe at coming at different stages of evolution. But thanks to IT, IT has acted some kind of a tool, a democratic tool, which provides a leveling field, a leveling field for 60 plus years as well as for a young kid who has just started learning alphabets. So from that point of view, your generation is really lucky and your generation is a hyperlinked generation, a generation which is connected and maybe at times it is hyper-connected. And we belong to, Professor Sadgopan will appreciate, we belong to a discipline called as systems discipline. And in system discipline, we say that everything is connected to everything else. And today, thanks to social media, thanks to this IT, you are really connected to everybody else. And that provides a very, very good opportunity of sharing, of collaborating, and at the same time, caring about other sections of the society. So from this point of view, this technology, especially information technology perspective, has to be appreciated. And it provides immense opportunity for all of us to be what they call as on the same page. Maybe the same page on the Facebook. The second perspective which I would like to share, as I told you, I was in IIT Bombay. And thanks to a very good curriculum, we had lot many courses in humanities. I did courses in economics. I did courses in psychology. I did courses in philosophy. 
I did courses in literature and so on. And these courses really helped. These courses helped me in gaining a perspective about humanity. Because normally, we engineers, somehow we believe in a very, very deterministic way. We feel as if the world is deterministic. We feel as an engineer, we have solution to each and every problem. We feel technology is panacea for each and every problem that society faces. Unfortunately, this view may be true to some extent. The humanities view basically helps us in understanding the other part. What is the other part? Other part which believes that world is not deterministic, world is highly stochastic, world is full of uncertainty, world is full of chaos, world is full of ambiguity. So as an engineer, we must also be able to deal with such kind of situation. Unless we appreciate the world which is highly uncertain, world which is ambiguous. And technology is making it more and more dynamic, more and more volatile. The second contribution of the humanities is that we also tend to appreciate. We coming from engineering domain, somehow we have a very strong mindset that everything can be quantified everything can be measured. But there are many things in life as Vikram was sharing. He is a musician, historian and so many other discipline he has acquired after engineering. To acquire this, you need an eye for appreciation. So that appreciation of beauty, appreciation of nature, or appreciation of a simple painting, I think that requires a different outlook rather than having a typical quantitative or numerical oriented approach. So humanity's perspective basically helps us in understanding this, that we must be in a position to appreciate. And this is also contingent on the things we do and the way we do different things. For example, as a typical what Vikram was sharing, that he has this passion of digging the records, going to the old archives, listening to Mahatma Gandhi's historical footage and so on. Now this job cannot be done unless you have passion. So as a human being, as a person who is groomed in humanity, we must also have a great degree of passion. We often say that typically whatever we do has two important components. One is the process component, which we do mechanically, which we do routinely as if somebody has told us to do this thing. Now, just now, before coming to this venue, Professor Prabhu was discussing this. What has happened? In today's world, everything has become more or less standardized. Everything has been put in some kind of a template. So it is good, sir, you don't allow PowerPoint for this presentation. See what happens, they say that power corrupts and PowerPoint corrupts absolutely. So this PowerPoint has basically made people to think in a particular template. Similarly, you talk about many of these proprietary software. You have a very, what you called as a standardized view. Unfortunately, in life, this doesn't happen. You must have a diversity. You must be in a position to appreciate the other point of view. 
original point of view which might not have been documented anywhere or which could be basically stimulating for you to think an altogether new manner. So as an engineer, we must also appreciate this, that there are many things in life which cannot be standardized or which cannot be put in a standard template. And moment it, you come out of the template, there is a huge scope for creativity. So the creativity is to be encouraged by providing such kind of opportunity. And I am sure there are many opportunities which we do with passion. So process part could be highly boring, highly dull and monotonous. But the passion part could be based on your interest, based on what you like, based on what you want to pursue in life. In our institute, we have a forum called as AASF. It's a very odd name. Abhigyan Abhikaushalyam Student Forum. Sir, for past 15 years, this is a forum which is run by the student, for the student, and it is entirely governed by student. Faculty absolutely is no-no. And this forum is very, very active. And what this forum does? The senior student, they teach junior student. They teach programming. They teach about many of the aspects which we as a teacher, we are not able to cover in the formal classroom setting. And this forum is an experiment which is to be appreciated that students really take pride in teaching their juniors. And we say that teaching is twice learning. And most of the time psychologists say that when you teach as a teacher, you gain a lot than the learner. And this is a good opportunity to understand the dynamics of collaboration, dynamics of sharing, and most importantly, how they groom the student. So we, in management, we take this as a case study, that this is also a big lesson for all our faculty members, that what to learn from student. And that has really given a different perspective on the teaching and learning process as such. This is also to be done with a great degree of passion. And unless students have passion, such kind of initiatives do not succeed. In our institute, sir, when we started in the initial stage, it is very interesting. Nobody will believe this. Till first 10 or 11 years, formally we had just four faculty members. Four faculty members on the road. And the entire development of our network, our library system, our hospital system, it was entirely done by student. And we as academic institute, we have a very, very dangerous ratio on which we are evaluated. That is called as teacher-student ratio. And this ratio forced us to recruit faculty and students initially were, were extremely uncomfortable. They said that earlier the environment was very good because faculty members were not there to disturb us. And we can do the things which we like. We can do the way we like. And that is also a big learning for us. Because being from the other side, somehow we want to say that this is the right way or this is the only right way of doing things. But students have their own way of understanding, their own way of developing. I think there is also a great learning in this. Professor Sadgopan has talked to me on this particular occasion and he mentioned that 
time limit has to be strictly followed and this is very good sir because we coming from teaching fraternity we have this habit of setting our clock for one hour so this is good that you have set the time i would like to just say that you must pursue what you like you must listen to what your inner voice is say and most importantly you must pursue a career which cannot be replaced by an app and that is where your individuality that is where your distinctiveness will be prevailing so once again i wish you a very very happy birthday and this is an ingenious day and my favorite is murphy's law if anything can go wrong it will and i must also tell you murphy was an engineer and wish you all the best and i am sure you will celebrate this with great enthusiasm and i must thank professor sadgopan for giving this wonderful opportunity thank you very much thank you sir that was a very interesting speech and those were very valuable insights and to all our other guests thank you for sharing your valuable experiences with us let me pr- request professor sadagopan to award mementos to our distinguished guests of honor now uh, can i just request professor sadagopan to uh, j- uh, initiate the cutting of the cake and all our guests to join in